Let's have a look at additional curve and object tools in Jewelcraft 2, which reduce everyday routine. And I start with curve tools. Size curve tool. It creates Bezier circle, aligns it to the position we need, increases resolution for smooth deformations, and disables radius option, so that after using apply scale, the size of the deformed objects will not change. If you use the tool with objects selected, they will be automatically deformed on created curve. In the operator redo, we have property that controls the diameter of the curve. Start up property specifies the start of the curve, top or bottom, which affect position of deformed objects. Now when we deform the shank along the curve, we need to close it in the ring. We can use the stretch curve option for that, but then curve will stretch any object deformed by the curve. That in most cases is not acceptable. Or we can stretch the object manually, as I always did. But this is far from being convenient and the result is not accurate. For this I created stretch tool that will stretch selected objects along the entire length of the curve. By the way, if you are using Bultron add-on, then you no longer need to apply all the modifiers on the ring object before boolean operations and then manually merge the ends using remove doubles. Bultron will do it for you. But it will do that only if you used either the Jewelcraft stretch tool or the stretch curve option which I demonstrated earlier. But what in case when we do not need to stretch the whole object? For example, in this ring there is a trimming under the stones and if we stretch the shank the trimming will also stretch. Let's enter edit mode and we see that stretch tool is acceptable in here too. Select vertices on both ends of the ring and use the tool. Then we can add additional geometry with the help of loop cut tool, so that the detailization in this place does not suffer. Another case. We deform the object along the ring. But for us it is important that the object maintain its proportions, for example text object or a pattern with square or circular shapes. In our case the cylinder. And we see that it does not maintain its proportions. This is particularly noticeable if we turn off and on the display of the curve modifier. This happens because the deformation goes perpendicular to the tangent of a circle. And the further away the deformation geometry is from the curve, the stronger deformation will be. And the closer geometry to the curve, the better proportions preserved. You can see it clearly if we look at the object from the bottom. As you can see, cylinder bottom face in red does not change the proportions. To solve this issue, we need to create a second size curve for the product outer size. We also have to lower the cylinder along the z-axis by the value of its height to make it deform by outer size. For this case I created tools deform over and under. Just select the objects and use the appropriate tool. Now when cylinder is deformed by outer size, its upper part maintains its proportions and its lower part deforms, which in this case does not matter. And the last tool displays the length of the curve. I require this tool quite rare in my work, but there is nothing really that can replace it when I do require it. With new curve scatter tool it will be somewhat problematic to mirror the settings on the other side of a product. For this I made mirror objects tool. Just select objects and mirror them along chosen axis. The downside is that the mirrored objects do not copy curve deformation as their originals. Therefore, in case where we change the original, 
it will be easier to simply mirror the settings again. You might have noticed that the mirrored objects are not perfectly aligned relative to the originals, so I have to adjust their rotation. To explain what is happening, let's move on to another example. Here I placed several gems and painted one of their face in red, so you could clearly see object's orientation. I select the gems and mirror them along the x-axis. As you can see, we got the expected result. Now I select the prongs and mirror them the same way. Now we got an expected result. Why is the rotation of the prongs is different from the gems rotation? Actually, the result we got is quite natural. If we measure the angle from the painted face to the prong on both stones, we will see that they are identical. Let's create prongs for both stones at once and set the position property to 0 degrees. See that prongs are located symmetrically on both stones. Now when I change position property, prongs begin to rotate clockwise, which explains their behavior. No matter how the stones are oriented, the prongs rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise. But you may be wondering, the stones were mirrored as we expected, why this does not happen with the prongs? Something is not right. And you will be correct. Something is not right. And the reason for this behavior is that by using position property we do not rotate prongs object. We move the geometry inside the prongs object. And if we create prongs with position 0 and then rotate them manually, then prongs are mirrored exactly as we have expected the first time. This happens because when we rotate the object, we change its rotation property, which we can use later. But when we move the geometry inside the object, we simply do not have the information about the rotation. But why does the position property rotate the geometry instead of object? And the reason for that? It will not work with dupliface. Let's add prongs to dupliface. Rotation of the geometry gives the expected result. Now I set the position value to 0 and rotate the object instead. As you can see, duplicate starts to behave unexpectedly. This happens because dupliface requires that the location, rotation and scale properties of duplicated object and dupliface object were identical. And when one of these properties is different, the behavior of the duplicate becomes unexpected. Then why I did not add an option so users could choose to rotate geometry or object? Symmetry does not work with object rotation. The symmetry occurs along object local axis. When we move the geometry, the axes remain in place and we can use them for symmetry. But when we rotate an object, along with it we rotate its local axis, where the prong always remains in the center of the axis and symmetry will simply duplicate it in place. Unexpected behavior will occur in both cases, but it will manifest itself in different ways with different cases which in my opinion only complicates the understanding of the instrument. Therefore, I chose the only way that has the most expected behavior in most situations. Perhaps later I will change that, if I think of the way and how to get rid of all downsides when rotating the prongs object. By the way, if you are worried that you'll have to adjust the rotation by the eye, then there is a way to adjust the rotation with perfect accuracy. We just remember the position value when creating prongs and then when mirroring we multiply value by 2. And we get the perfect symmetry. Plus you need to adjust the rotation only when you mirror on one axis. When mirroring on two axis, no adjustments required. 
Also, there is no need for adjustment when mirroring other gem cuts, since usually we use the symmetrical prongs arrangement, and the adjustment is only necessary for a symmetrical arrangement, as in the second stone, where prongs located diagonally. When we need to project the pattern on the surface, we use the shrink wrap modifier, which works great with flat patterns, but not with 3D patterns. But there is a way. We can project two-dimensional lattice to the surface with shrink wrap, and then deform the pattern using the projected lattice. But the setup for this is relatively complex. And the lattice project tool does this in one click. Select the object that you want to project, then select the object on the surface of which the first object will be projected, and use the tool. You can see that lattice is created according to object dimensions, and if I move lattice and the pattern, you'll see that it is projected onto surface. For better projection, it is best to use snap to surface, which will automatically align objects along the normal of the surface. To do this, switch snap element to face, snap target to medium, and activate align rotation option. It is also possible to deform multiple objects at once. In addition, if we select all lattice objects, then we can change shrink wrap modifier offset property, which allows us to control the distance between the patterns and the surface. Lattice profile deforms selected shank object to create engagement ring profile. The tool creates one dimensional lattice object that is a bit wider than selected object, adds lattice modifier, and creates a vertex group to deform only the top part of the selected object. All demonstrated tools significantly reduce routine that we all have to go through every day modeling jewelry. Thank you for your attention. Download link in the description. Use Jewelcraft, report bugs and suggest improvements.